Let's Practice Flute. Hi, I'm Dr. Matthew Allison, and this video is going to cover up the warm-up that is created for the 2024 Midwest Flute Institute. And this particular daily warm-up is sponsored by Flute World, your source for all things flute. Now let's look at this warm-up sheet. It starts with the breath kicks. Breath kicks are sometimes called breath attacks or abdominal pulses or a number of different things. We're going to contract the abdominal muscles in to force the air out. The throat really open, the jaw loose, and the lips loose. So essentially we're going to be going So there's no tongue to these attacks. Let's go ahead and play through that first opening breath kick exercise, which starts off in B flat major. It comes down the B flat major arpeggio and then the breath kicks continue to go up the F major arpeggio. So this is measures one through 18. exercise will start with that C natural fingering. So you might notice this warm-up packet goes through a couple of different key signatures. This covers everything from two sharps through four flats uh, and progresses through different styles of warm-ups. Next we have pitch bends. Pitch bends can be done in a couple of different ways. I'm going to suggest that we find pitch bends by keeping the air column essentially the same, keeping the same dynamic, but we're uh, thinking about moving the face to lower the pitch. So my face is going to think, ooh, 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 and you might try that on your own before you worry about putting it as part of this warm-up. Bending pitch down can be really, really, really useful. We need to bend pitch down when we're playing loud. We need to bend pitch down oftentimes when we're playing in the upper register. The opposite of bending pitch down, bending pitch up, is also really useful in piano playing on low notes and releases. So after you bend the pitch down, work to bring the pitch back up so that way you're ending in tune and even think about tapering away. Pitch bends, measure 19 through 29. that we extended down. So the natural sign with the lower arrow is what we're using to indicate bending the pitch down, and then the return natural sign just means come back to pitch. The next exercise measures 30 through measure uh, 45 are harmonics. Harmonics, we're going to use the low note fingering and slowly overblow or speed up the air to get the notes that speak above it. So the flute is based on a harmonic system like other instruments, and you can look more into that in other places but the lower note is what we're gonna finger. So when we finger the low G, we're gonna then overblow it to get to the octave and then overblow again to get the fifth above the octave, which is a D. We can continue to overblow and get the second octave and even the third above that, which will happen a little bit later through this exercise. So when you're looking at measure 30, the first note is a G, 
The second note, the diamond shape, is what we're fingering, which is that low G, and we're gonna overblow to hear the middle G. And then the third note is also a diamond G, and we're gonna overblow that to, to a D. So thinking about keeping the throat open, the mouth open, and speeding the air up by changing air pressure. Harmonics. Now that is a pretty tricky exercise, especially descending harmonics and then also isolating the harmonics, uh, the D A, D, D, and the D F sharp. That might take a little extra practice. I could use another go at it myself. Page two. The first exercise measures 46 through 66 is a circle of fourths. So starting in D major, it's going up four notes, D, E, F sharp, G. So we do include the note that we start. And G would be the next scale in circle fourths. And we have G, A, B, C, C, D, E, F. Once it gets to the flat side is when it becomes really interesting as far as remembering the flats. So if you go back to D major, we had two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. The fourth note uh, leads us to the G, then the G leads us to the C, the C leads to the F. But on this other side, F, G, A, B flat is the new flat. B flat, C, D, E flat is the new flat. E flat, F, G, A flat is a new flat. A flat, B flat, C, D flat is a new flat. So your order of flats, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat, G flat, C flat, F flat, is based on fourths. So in six, eight, we're gonna keep the metronome the same. One, two, three, four, five, six, thinking in six, eight. Starting with D major. Now, depending on your level of performance, you might play each of those multiple times and in different octaves. So that first D major, you could play it in three different octaves. Uh, and when we're going quickly at MFI, you can choose the octave that makes the most sense for you, the one that feels most challenging if you wanna push yourself, or the one that seems most comfortable. The next exercise, double tonguing, measure 67 through 82, is gonna work on balancing the consonants of our double tongue. So thinking ta-ta or tu-tu, the T shape, and ka ka or ku ku or ku ku, whatever your K shape is, I just have T's and K's. We're gonna alternate tu tu tu, ku ku ku, tu ku tu, tu ku tu ku tu. So the two, 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 that's what we're most comfortable with, what we've done most. The coo, 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 we want to sound as close to the two, two, two as possible. And then a simple alternate, two, coo, two, and then double time, two, coo, two, coo, two. Measure 75, the rhythm begins to change. We have a couple of uh, measures that have the same rhythm, uh, but the rhythm doesn't stay out, stay consistent throughout. At measure 75, the rhythm is gonna to begin to change. A couple of measures repeat the same rhythm, but the rhythm doesn't stay the same throughout. So make sure you're paying attention to what the rhythm is saying in each different part. 
Double time me. Measure 67. The next exercise, measure 83 through 96, is the circle of fifths. These are five note scale patterns um, and get us around the scale going in the opposite direction, removing flats and then beginning to add sharps. So the sharp scales are based more on the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths and circle of fourths, it's the same circle, just one goes one direction and the other goes the other direction. Moving through here, pretty simple. You can do whatever articulation makes most sense for you, and again, whatever octaves make most sense for you, whether you want to leave it easy or challenging. When you're practicing these at home, I recommend that you do them in all octaves. When we're doing it at camp, I recommend you do the octave that's gonna feel good, but give you a little bit of warm-up challenge. I'm gonna to play today the printed octaves. Two, three, And it could continue throughout all of the keys until we return to A flat major completing the circle. But we'll stop there for camp. Again, practice in as many octaves as you can to gain total control over the entire range of the flute. The next exercise, measuring 97 through 111, vibrato pulses. Now these we're gonna connect, um, but we're gonna still think about the abdominal kicks type thing, or you can think about releasing the air pressure in the throat. We wanna keep that dynamic close to being the same and the pitch around center. With vibrato, pitch is gonna fluctuate. Mostly, if you're thinking of contraction, the pitch will go up, so we wanna compensate by aiming air into the flute. Or if you're thinking about a releasing type of vibrato, the pitch will go down. So wherever you are, we wanna make sure that the overall pitch sounds about in tune. Vibrato pulses, notice that the first few have rhythms of triplets, and then starting in measure 105, we have more rhythmic variation. So you might practice counting through that before you even play. Two, three,
with speed of five vibrato can be one of the ways that we work on having expressive elements. Speed and shape and size of the vibrato all create different kinds of styles and characters and moods. Page four, chromatic scale. The, these eight measures are just two versions of the chromatic scale, one descending from G to G, the next ascending from F to F. The descending scale, I used flats. The ascending scale, I used sharps, but it's just a chromatic scale in both ways. So playing through this chromatic scale, nice and controlled. Measure 112, two, three, There are so many ways to practice the chromatic scale, and they're all great. We should do it a lot. We play that scale a lot. Next, measure 120 through 126 is a short exercise on undertone harmonics. For undertone harmonics, we're going to finger the high note and purposefully underblow it to feel a relaxed jaw, relaxed lips, open throat, and warm, warm air. We're going to speed up the air as subtly as possible, trying to find an in-between sound from the lowest, and then eventually arriving at the high note with the nice relaxed feeling and the pitch then is going to be more centered and low since we won't be tensing up quite as much. So the undertone harmonic, I'm going to finger the high F and I'm going to just be as slow as possible. And these are great to do in the mirror and watching that you don't create tension in the lips, in the face, in the shoulders, in the eyebrows or anywhere else. So playing at 120. One, two, three, And again, we're using the high note fingerings there. So F, F sharp, G, G sharp, high A, thumb two, one pinky, high A sharp, which is like a B flat thumb, right hand one for short key, and then high B, thumb one, three, second short key with pinky. From there, we'll move into some octaves, moving back and forth. Try to do most of the change in the air pressure versus big facial movement. I like to save as much facial movement for pitch as possible, and then create intervals using the air pressure that I'm beginning to learn to control. One, two, three, So we just ended the previous exercise on high F. We'll start this exercise on high F and we'll be in F major. So we've got that B flat. Think about tapering away and creating nice open resonance with as spinny and vibrato as possible. One, two, three.
sing and play is a really fun uh, warm up for flute playing. We're going to start by playing the F, then we're going to sing the F, and then we're going to try to sing and play simultaneously. If you're new to singing and play, you might start just by humming or singing like an open ah, ha, and then move to an U shape. Ah, ha, and when you get that U shape, blow. Bring your hand in front of you. And hear that airstream. Do that a few times before you worry about the exercise. Measure 155, sing and play. Now let's figure out how to find the relative minor. The relative minor is based off of the six scale degree of a major scale. So in A flat, if we're to count up six notes, A flat, B flat, C, D flat, E flat, F would be the sixth note. F minor is a relative minor of A flat major. It's a little bit faster for me though to count down. So the octave eight is, is, could be a starting point and we could count down eight, seven, six. So these next few measures just find that relative minor, A flat minor, a flat G, I'm sorry, A flat major, A flat G, F would be the relative minor. From E flat major, E flat D, C would be the relative minor. Playing through this applied theory, measure 167. One, two, three, And that sets us up to play a little bit more in minor. So the next chunk is five note scale patterns again, but this time in minor. So 174 through 187 is five note scale patterns in minor, starting with F minor, which is the relative minor of A flat major. You'll notice a third note, F, G, A flat, is that relative major. Same thing with C minor, the relative major, C, D, E flat is the relative major of C minor, etc. 174, one, two, Three. And again, when you're playing at home, practice those in all octaves. Get comfortable with the entire range of the flute. For camp, play whatever octave is going to be a happy challenge for you. Arpeggios, major and minor. This is measures 188 through 201. This is simply going to go through our major and minor arpeggios. So the major third, the D to F sharp, versus the next measure, the minor third, D to F, is the quality that makes us have the major sounding key or the minor sounding key. So watch that second note, which is the major third or the minor third. I will take a repeat. For this playthrough, I'm going to do the first time slurred, the second time tongued. One, two, ready?
the C flat is fingered like a B natural. So the note right below a C would be a C flat or B natural. And then finally on this warm up, terraced dynamics, 202 to the end. We're gonna first play each note, forte, mezzo forte, mezzo piano, piano, and then slur it, I think those four steps. So terraced, you can imagine coming down the stairs, loud, less loud, less loud, and then soft at the end. Remember to think about your pitch change oh, to help make sure the pitch stays more stable. One, two, three, include with me today. I'll see you at camp. And while you're here, please subscribe to this YouTube station. And don't forget to check out www.practiceflute.com for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. And also check out fluteworld.com for your source of flutes, sheet music, accessories, and all things flute.